In this video, we're going to look at another advanced integration technique called integration by parts. In the previous video, we looked at integration by substitution, but we wouldn't be able to solve this particular equation using integration by substitution. And the reason for that is that we would still end up with an integral containing both x and u, which we would need to integrate with respect to u. You can try it for yourself, but you'll find that you're unable to resolve the integral. So instead, we're going to use something called integration by parts. So in the top left hand corner, we have our general formula, which states that u dv dx integrated with respect to x equals uv minus the integral v du dx integrated with respect to x. So what we can do this time, if we look at the left hand side of that equation, is we can assign one of our variables as u, and we can assign the other variable as dv dx. So in this case, I'm going to say that u is our x value and dv dx is cos 4x. So let's write this underneath. We have u equals x. And I've just said that dv dx is cos 4x. So from what we have there, we also need to find du by dx the derivative of u with respect to x. And x is basically the same as 1x to the power 1. Well, 1x to the power 1 is going to become 1x to the 0. And anything to the power 0 is 1. So in effect, we have 1 times 1, which is just 1. Next, we have dv dx equals cos 4x. But from that, we're going to need to find v. Now, hopefully you recall that integration is the inverse of differentiation. So here we have a derivative dv by dx equals cos 4x. Therefore, to find v, we need to integrate cos 4x with respect to x. Well, cos functions integrate to sine functions, and our bracket remains unchanged. But what we need to do is divide the function by the coefficient of x inside the brackets. So dividing by 4 is the same as 1 over 4. So cos 4x integrates to a quarter sine 4x. So if we refer back to our original function, we had the integral of x cos 4x dx, and we've expressed that in terms of our general equation up the top, u dv dx with respect to x. So we can set that equal to uv, well u is 1x, or just x, and v is a quarter sine 4x. Or well, x times a quarter is the same as x over 4. So uv is x over 4 sine 4x. And from that I need to subtract the integral of v du dx with respect to x. Well v du dx is multiplying v in the bottom left hand corner by du dx which is just going to be a quarter sine 4x, because we're just multiplying by 1. So we've got the integral of a quarter sine 4x with respect to x. So if we move to the next line, uv remains the same. We've got x over 4 sine 4x. But we need to integrate sine 4x with respect to x. Well, sine integrates to minus cos. So we've got minus, minus cos, 4x. And the other thing we need to do is divide the quarter by the coefficient of x inside the brackets. So 1 over 4 divided by 4 is 1 over 16. The other thing that we mustn't forget is that we're going to get a constant of integration. So let's simplify that a little bit. We have x over 4 sine 4x minus minus, which is the same as plus 1 16th cos 4x plus a constant. Let's take a look at another example. And although I've framed this example slightly differently, the process needs to be the same because what we have in the bottom left hand corner is we know that the value of y when t equals 0 is 5. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that fact to find the value of y 
when t equals 1. So in this example, we're going to need to find the value of our constant of integration. We've also been given an equation expressed in the form of a differential equation. And what we need to do is find y from that. So as we know that integration is the inverse of differentiation, we can rewrite that equation as y equals the integral of 3t e to the minus 0.5t dt, the integral with respect to t. Let's look at our possible substitutions. And this time we're going to set 3t as u, and we're going to set e to the minus 0.5t as dv dt. Note that the reason why it's dv dt rather than dv dx is because our variable this time is t, not x. And so let's put some information in the top right hand corner. We have u equals 3t. We know that we need to find du by dt. Differentiating that with respect to t just gives us 3. We have dv dt. equals e to the minus 0.5t. And we know that we need to find v. So we'll get v equals, we need to integrate e to the minus a half t. So we'll get e to the minus a half t. That part remains the same, but we need to divide by minus a half. Well, we need to divide one by minus a half because e to the minus a half t is the same as one e to the minus a half t and one divided by minus a half is the same as multiplying by minus two. So one times minus two gives us minus two here. The other things we know is that y zero equals five and y one is the thing we're trying to find. So let's clear some space on the left hand side and then we can solve this equation. So now we're referring to the right hand side of the general equation because our original equation was y equals the integral of 3t e to the minus 0.5t dt. But now if we refer to the right hand side of the general equation, we can rewrite that as follows. First of all, we have u times v. Well, on the right hand side, we've said that u is 3t, and we've said that v is minus 2e to the minus 0.5t. So 3t times minus 2 is minus 6t. So let's rewrite this as minus 6t. And then we have the e to the minus 0.5t. So that new term there represents uv. Now from that, we need to subtract the integral of v du dx with respect to x. Well, v is minus 2e to the minus 0.5t, as we said before, and du dx is just 3. So this time, 3 times minus 2 is minus 6e to the minus 0.5t with respect to t. And the reason it's with respect to t and not with respect to x is because our variable is t and not x. So now we have something we can integrate. So we can rewrite that line as minus 6t e to the minus 0.5t minus, well, when we integrate minus 6e to the minus 0.5t, the power of e remains the same. But we need to divide the original coefficient, which was the minus 6, by the coefficient in the power here, the minus 0.5 and minus 6 divided by minus a half is the same as minus 6 times minus 2, which is plus 12. And we need to remember to add our constant. So the next step in solving this is to determine the value of our constant k. And the way we're going to find the value of k is by using what we know about the function when t equals 0. So we've already said that when t equals 0, this equation or this function has a value of 5. So what we can do is we can say that 5 equals, and we're going to input t as 0. Well, this term here, if t equals 0, is just going to be 0. And the reason for that is anything multiplied by 0 
it's just going to be zero. So we have minus six times zero times the exponential, but that's still just going to be zero. Our second term is minus 12 e to the minus 0.5 times zero. Well, that's exactly the same as saying minus 12 e to the zero, because minus a half times zero is just zero. And there I'm referring to the power of e here. So e to the zero plus k. So we can simplify that. We just have five equals, well, minus 12 times the exponential of zero is just minus 12. Anything to the power zero is one. So we have minus 12 plus k. Therefore, adding 12 to each side, we can see that k must equal 17. So now we have the value of our constant k. So next we can find the value of the function at time equals one. Let's just make some adjustments. Let's replace the plus k here with our plus 17, since we know the value of that constant now. And then we'll just clear a little space at the bottom. And this time we're going to find the value of the function when t equals one. So we have y1, equals, and all we're going to do is we're going to input t as 1 into each of the following locations. We have t is 1 here, we have t is 1 here, and we have t is 1 here. So we get minus 6 times 1, well minus 6 times 1 is just minus 6, e to the minus 0 0.5 times 1, well 0 0.5 times 1 is just 0 0.5, minus 12 e and again, we've got minus 0 0.5 times 1, which is going to be minus 0 0.5 plus 17. And running that through the calculator, I get an answer of 6.08 to two decimal places. And that represents the value of the original integral up here at a time of t equals 1. So we've seen a couple of things in this example. First of all, we've seen how we can use integration by parts to simplify an integral. And this was our original integral here that we simplified. But we've also seen how we can use what we know about the integral and the initial conditions in order to find the value of the constant of integration. Once we found the value of the constant of integration, we was able to find the value of the integral at a time of t equals one.